if if I had started and I wanted to do um, what this new rapper is doing, you know, like obviously try and do everything yourself, it's you know I I think it w it wouldn't have worked for me. You know, I had to take that decision about first going to get a manager, second going to get a lawyer. You know, and not I'm not saying that I didn't have I didn't have no money then. You know, I just I went I went and knocked on record companies. I stood outside Choice FM, st stood outside Kiss FM, you know, Radio One at the time. Went to all the gigs. I remember with Bobby Friction when he was doing his thing. I was doing. I was just. I was really trying to look for someone to handle my business because I can't handle my business and make music as well at the same time. You know, it's very important to have someone you know, really kind of looking out for you. And, and not only that, and just giving you that kind of like, you know what, just keep on doing your thing. Keep on doing your thing. You know, you're going to... I mean, I remember when Apache then came to my house when I was living with my mum. And my mum was like, Apache's here, you've made it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's, you know, and I'm like, I still haven't got no money. <laughs> you're still giving me £50. And I was 21 years old, I'm 36, you know. And I, but 21, I left college when I was 18. From 18 to 23, I lived with my mum. She gave me 50 pound a week pocket money. And I w I'm not ashamed to admit it. I was like, I'm going to do this music thing. I don't care. I, don't, I'm, I, you know, I, can, I can do computers, but I'm going to do this. But you know what? I, there's a bit of pride that I need to kind of put aside and say, I'm going to grind, and I'm going to grind, and I'm going to work, travel up to Birmingham, seeing Apache standing outside his house going to see Bali Sagu knocking on his door saying, sign me, sign me. Going to see all these labels, all these labels we went to see at the time, multi-tone, all these people. These young rappers, I, I, I really kind of I feel for you but because it is a tough industry, you know. But my example is, and I'm sorry, I forgot his name, this rap, Smarts. Um, what you said is that, you know, Apache paved the way, I paved the way, and now it's you guys are paying the way, paving the way, but no one's really giving you that thing. Right in this, in this Asian industry, I can only say the reason why it kind of worked for you know for us at the time. If I was doing, I love R and B. I didn't even listen to Punjabi music. I listened to Sufri Boys, Achanak, Sahotas. These were my people. I didn't know nothing else. I was I was listening to Teddy Riley. That was my thing. Black Street, all these things, and I was doing R and B music. But Trevor Nelson and all these people, and I, you know, I love Trevor, but I didn't. They they weren't listening to me because they had. They had all these Stargate and Starship and all these, R you know, I would say, you know, black producers, UK black producers doing R&B. And I was like, I want to do R&B. And they were like, mm, they're going to play that. So I was like, I want to do something which they can't do. You know, Apache did something which he, he that uh, uh, another Asian rapper or another reggae singer, sorry, can't do. He put Punjabi lyrics and said, you know what, I'm going to do what I do. And I'm going to do what you can't do. You know, and I, I, I done R&B with Indian because that's what I thought, you know, I'm going to do that. That's fusion. And going back to this, and I'm, I just want to say one point. Going back to um, Smart's question, and, I, and I, I witnessed this. I was in a room in America with an Indian rapper from the UK. And I was saying, check this beat. It's boom, 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 boom. He had a dull beat, a little dumby. I'm saying, you want to break the industry? I can't break the urban industry because that's not my scene. I hold my hands up. All you grime artists sound the same. I'm 36, I'm not in that scene. I, I love what you guys are doing, but I, you know, I can't tell the difference between you or Tiny. I can, but it's kind of you're doing the same thing. So for me, you're not standing out. So rap over this, because Tiny Temper's not doing that, right? You know what, what you said to me, right? And maybe this is not because you told me you didn't come from the Asian scene, you came from the urban scene, right? So it's a different kind of thing. He said to me, nah, man, I don't want to do that. That's Bangra, that's Bangra, that's got Tumbi in it. Nah, man, I don't want to do that. That's not my thing. I don't listen to Bangra. Fine. Buster Rhymes come out next week with a, uh, with a track and he's rapping over a Bangra tune, a Bangra loop. The same rapper with his mates, when I, saw it, when I saw him in London, he was like, that tune is sick, it's crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy, that beat is sick. I'm like, but why, didn't, why wouldn't you rap over an Indian beat? Why is it all right when a non-Asian raps over an Indian beat and an Asian rapper th you know, finds it amazing, but when you give the same Asian rapper an Indian beat, he's like, he's embarrassed. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying to the Asian rapper, I wasn't saying start putting Punjabi words in or Gujarati or Hindi words in. Stick to your lyrical content. You're a deep rapper. He was a deep rapper. Stick to what you do. Let, send your message out. But send your message out with a beat which is going to rock a club or gonna, is going to stick out on radio. So solid. They had shabs. They had all these people. Because the reason why some of their tracks really poke through in the Asian industry is because 
people like Shabs and D-Boy and all these people and Seth, they were adding a little bit of Indian hooks and that's why they, they, they really crossed over to the Asian industry as well. You saw all these gigs, you saw so, so solid on them, you know, because they had that Asian vibe. So I can only give that advice to, to people who's like, don't be afraid of your culture, use it, use this platform, you know, and talent, if you're talented, you've got to grind, that's all I say. It's not in your head, you know, you don't agree? I do agree in a sense, but one thing I do have to say is that what the gentleman over there was saying, sorry, Mike. yeah, Big Mike, he was saying that the UK and America, one thing that I appreciate about Americans is that they nurture greatness. They nurture their artists. You know, if the UK really do stand up and say what they do, they would have nurtured them here. We would not have to go over there. Why does Jay Sean have to go to America to blow up? Why does any artist have to go to America to blow up? You know what I mean? Why, why is that? Are you talking about Asian? I'm talking about artists in general, Asian, black, whatever. It doesn't matter, irrespective. But, you know, the, it, but, but the thing is, the, Asia, um, the American market, they know how to nurture they people. To to I mean, like, someone like Craig, has never, someone like Craig, who's a great friend of mine, He's made, he made a lot of money from Born to Do It in the UK, and he's retired. He lives in Miami, he can, he's, he can get deals, but he made it in his own country. But he's set. But he's, but, he's, but, he's, no, but he's not worried about making it to America. And I'm, so, I'm sorry, but a lot of the young, young British Asians, they do think that, they think you need to go to America to make it. But a lot of, you see, there's, there's a scene here, there's an urban scene here. I'm not part of that scene, so I can't comment on your thing. I'm not part of the tiny tempers. So I have to ask you, if you have to define the urban scene, what's the urban scene to you? The urban mean? scene? Yeah, what does it mean to you if you have to define But I'm not, in the, I'm not in the urban scene. Can you skip that one? What do you say? If I had to define to you, Rishi, you know, summarise, what is the urban scene to you? Even though, irrespective of you're in it or not, how would you define it? Well, I can, I can, only, I can only comment on what we did. You know, we did, we did I did... I, I'm not in that scene, brother. I'm not in it. You know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in my scene. My scene is I produce Indian music and I produce it with influences that I love, whether it's English, whether it's reggae, whether it's Hindi, whether it's Punjabi, whether it's Kuali, I don't care. And I put it out there, meaning when I mean put it out there, I just put it out there. You know, if I work for an artist, if a new artist comes to me, I work with him. If an established artist comes to me, whether I work with them. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't make music for a radio station. I don't make music for the scene as such. I make music for the artist. And that's where you're getting it wrong. Can I ask you one more thing, please? If you don't mind. You know, when you're talking about talent, you, earlier on you mentioned that, you know, you've got to be very talented and you've got to grind and whatever, you know. Um, I had to kind of disagree with you because there's a lot of talented artists out here, there's a lot of talented MCs out here, there's a lot of talented filmmakers and actors and whatever, but talent necessarily does not get you far. I think more or less it's about the connection with people. I think it's about, you know, you know there's a cap on things. There's a hierarchy because you reach to a certain level as an independent artist, then there's the commercial ground, then there's beyond the commercial ground where you make it global. All, all these artists that are kind of made it now, in a sense made it when I mean signed to a label, but you look at the N-dubs, you look at the Tinies, you look at all these people, they grinded until they could get to a place, but they can't get anymore because you can't stay independent and be big. You have to have a major behind you. And I'm sorry to say it, but you have to. You, you've got to have... But I, I, I'm, I'm, look, I, at one point, I had seven artists under me, and I was like, you know what, I can't do this because... Every artist wants to just be a Jay Sean. You know, every artist wants to be a Juggy. Or, you know, because I can only give those examples. No, no, because they're Punjabi. If, it's, if, it's, if I've signed a Punjabi singer, he wants to be like, I want to be like this person. You know what I mean? I'm not talking, I'm, I'm talking about from my experiences. You know, that's why I'm saying from an Asian rapper, I haven't worked with an Asian rapper. So I don't know, you know, that kind of scene or what they're kind of doing. But my, my thing is that as an independent, you, you know, you, you can only take your music as far. If Virgin Records didn't come and sign us, Dance With You will still just be an underground hit. Simple as that. You know, you know if, if we didn't have Shabs from Ver uh, Relentless at the time, you know, find us, 
I mean, when I mean find us, meaning coming to one of the gigs where we were and saying, you know what, we want to take it on. And that is, that is a story. And that's where all these artists in America or any artist, independent artists will always stay independent until a major comes. I'm not saying that, you know, you have to be, you, you'll only make it if you're talented. There are majors who try to sign the artist, but the thing is when you come to the business proposal, when you come to the business deal, whether you've got the best you know, um, solicitors or lawyers or not, they try to skank you, you know? And I, I, was, I was speaking to Mega Man the other day, you know what I mean? This was about two weeks ago because, you know, um, I'm trying to make a film and, you know, we're trying to conduct business here. But even Mega Man was saying when he did the whole Soul Solid thing, you know, he was offered 20 grand. Okay, and then he never accepted it because one thing that he said that was very prominent and it sticks by me, you know, and what I stand for and what SMART stands for as well and any artist that's around me as well is that we value our art. We will not sell ourselves cheap. And once you value yourself, and that's, that's what... I mean, you know, I've, you know I, 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 and I commend that because everything I've done and people I've worked with, we've done things that we're true to, you know. I've never to, my, to this day done a grime track because I don't do grime music, I don't know nothing about it. I've been offered money to do grime tracks. People come to me, labels come to me, Sony have come to me, all these people say, we need a grime, we need a grime Asian fusion remix. You know, we'll pay you whatever you want to pay, we need this artist. And these are, you know, these are high artists that are in the game in the urban scene, you know, in, in the black music scene in this country. I'm like, I don't do grime music. You want to come with a, a Rishi Rich remix? I'll do that for you. So I'm not going to do anything I'm not true to. Let me get that straight.